and we can go change the output column names here instead of resource here we're going to call this display name we're going to call this resource value so we can distinguish the two and if we do preview results we see we've gotten rid of the primary colon part but we need to get rid of the colon nt so we go back to our computed columns and we edit him so we also want to add another replace which I'll do here by going to our uh, functions and finding replace again dot replace and we can do dot replace dot 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 we can add on as many functions as we want so we don't need to do separate lines here so we know uh, there's another colon and then there's some text nt in this case um, but in most cases there's going to be a colon product code at the end of every server name or node name that there exists in the database so if you're working with Linux is going to be colon LZ. Well, we want to remove those two, and we don't want to make another another uh, uh, expression for each and every individual product code because that could be you know tedious. So we're going to do colon dot star and then put the and put the dollar sign, which means ends with. Finish it off with the forward slash colon. So this means if it ends with a colon and anything after a colon we're going to remove it so we can click OK on this OK and we can go to preview results now and now we have just ITM that's exactly what we want OK which is good so click OK and now we have our resource value and resource label uh, output columns so now we need to change our parameter group uh, our server name parameter to reflect the difference so we click on edit and again I recommend clicking off of resources and clicking on something else and going back now we want still the value to be resource but we want the display text to be resource label click OK and you can always test it and see if it's working properly remember it's only going to show you the value not the label click OK and then save. Now it's not going to be sorted because we still need to change this property here to sort it. We need to make fixed order false as we did before. We need to sort by and of course we have to do the three clicks for, for a strange reason. We're going to sort by label. It's very important here because now that we've removed primary colon uh, it's going to be sorted differently alphabetically. So we need to make it label and then we need to make sure the sort direction is ascending and we're good and we can click off that and say save and now if we go to our report here and do preview we should be able to see we see windows that, as we saw before now we see just ITM exactly what we want all right So now that all these changes we've made will be changed globally, but uh, we are going to come across a situation in the server name where we can have, um, uh, let's go to the computed columns under resources and edit this guy again. Now, there's going to be a situation where we're going to have different types of agents out there, and primary colon isn't going to be the only text that it's going to start with, potentially. Well, we know it's going to start with something colon, right? And colon is never going to be used in the host name, so we can feel safe that as long as the text starts with anything but a colon, and we can do this by putting a bracket, and then if you put a caret in the first, as the first character in the bracket, it means anything but, and we'll put the colon, close the bracket, and then we'll put uh, a colon afterwards. Okay. So this means that uh, if the string starts with anything but a colon followed by a colon, we're going to replace it with empty string. So primary colon, it won't, that will be replaced, but plus anything else colon will be replaced. And the reason why we do anything but a colon is because otherwise it will remove more, more characters than we want. And the same goes here. Uh, although we're using dot star here, Right. This could be a problem if we weren't going in order. What we should do here is uh, anything but a colon, 
at the end here, just like before. So bracket a uh, caret anything but a colon ending. All right. So so it starts with a colon. It ends with colon anything but a colon, and that's how we're going to replace it. So we click OK, OK, preview results, and now we have an, a situation, right? We have a situation where now they're the exact same. So what did we do wrong in the computed columns? Well, uh, what we did wrong is... Uh, if we go back toward the, our old dot star, click OK, OK, we see we have a problem. Primary is now showing only. So what's happening here is so what's wrong with this query is we need to change it to the beginning, uh, we want to replace anything. It starts with anything but a colon, any amount of times, followed by a colon. And then we want to also replace anything that essentially ends with a colon, followed by anything but a colon. And we click OK, and we preview results, and it's exactly what we expect. We want just the hosting. So now we're good for any type of agent, not just the Windows agents and we click save and now all those changes have been taken globally across all the different reports so we can go verify everything's still working by clicking the preview tab on our report here and selecting and we see ITM is still there exactly as we expect so now that we have that uh, say we want to edit the report to select different types of OS's. Um, instead of just uh, Windows, Unix, and Linux, say we want to select a different agent's uh, data. We want to select Windows Remote Agent as an example. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we would have to edit this data set, and we would create a new row, uh, a new result for uh, essentially Windows Remote. But remember, if we change it here, it changes globally. And we might not want to do that. In this case, we won't want to. And that's because if we do so, that means every report will have the option of selecting Windows Remote. But we're only going to edit the queries or the data sets for this one report. So if they were to select on any other report, the Windows Remote, it would not work for them. So that's why we want to just, we can override the inheritance of the library by copying them and putting them locally in the report, which is what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy the data source, OS type, and put it in our report. And then we're going to copy the OS type. And we're also going to need to do resources because uh, the resources are going to pull from a different table. And we're going to copy that and go and paste in our data sets here. Okay. So now we are done with that, we can save, click the save button. Now we've done that, we need to go to our OS type data set, go to the script tab, 